the video will begin momentarily. But first, but before I show you what's going on, the thumbnail is this could have been fatal or a fatal mistake. This is my fuel line for my carburetor. And if you look right here, you can see where it was sitting on the exhaust. That is going to eventually melt through and that is eventually going to cause a fire. So when I put this thing, a fire, when I put this thing back together, I need to make sure that I fix that. Your video will not begin. What's going on YouTube? Bryce builds it all. I am continuing trying to get this Cessna 150 up here at the school running again. If you watched my last video, I was just kind of talking about why there aren't more aircraft YouTubers and working on the ignition switch, but I'm actually gonna just focus on maintenance this time. And I know the right mag is dead. It's not firing at all. And I know for sure that there's some sort of sediment or nastiness in the carburetor. So I'm not gonna waste time. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull the right mag and pull the carburetor. And since this is a school airplane and not a certified airplane, and the airworthiness has been voided on it, I can actually open those up, which I can't normally do as an AMP. That's something that would have to go out for overall. So y'all stick around, I'm gonna get this cowling off. It's, it's so heavy, it's like 80 pounds. Pro tip, this uh, fuel shut off valve is really tight and really sticky. It just doesn't want to close. Not surprised this airplane sits outside. If you take a crescent wrench and just sort of open it up till it goes over, it'll give you a little bit bigger lever arm on it. Uh, careful though, you can break it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start by getting this magneto out of here. Now, I kind of was lying to you a minute ago. I said that as an aircraft mechanic, you can't overhaul a magneto and that's, that's not true. You can, but you have to ensure that you have all of the manuals and test equipment necessary to perform the job. And they also, everything has to be um, calibrated. So yes, you can do it. It would just be very, very expensive to buy all of those manuals and all of that test equipment to overhaul just one Magneto, which is why most people just send them out. Plus overhaul facilities are gonna charge, end up charging what you would charge anyways to do it. So there's not really a point in doing it yourself. It ends up costing the same to just go ahead and send it to a professional. And the same can be said for the carburetor. Obviously with a Magneto, um, I'm not overhauling it. I'm just repairing it as necessary for this uh, Continental. But what I'm gonna do is check the points, check the coil, I'll check the, the magnet, I'll remagnetize it if it needs to be remagnetized. I'll test the Magneto on the bench and see if I can figure out why it's not firing and then the last thing I will probably do is time it to the engine. The carburetor, I do not have a flow bench to flow check the carburetor but I will pull it off and make sure that its inlet screen is clean, make sure that the float bowl is clean and empty, make sure that the float and needle are all working properly because it was running for a minute but I suspect that the carburetor is full of water because I have to start it with starting fluid. It's not wanting to start um, just with its own accelerator pump and its own choke. Let's see, aha, see? Get this magneto out of the way. And then I should be able to do it. Should be able to get this nut off. Ooh, I wanna phrase that different. It's getting stuck up, I, probably just cause the threads are rusty, but it is what it is. All right. I'm gonna turn this off. I'll get y'all when it's back out. I'm in the hangar now. I'd like to apologize for the song of my people there in the background. They're teaching a sheet metal class. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and start with the carburetor just cause I think the carburetor is gonna be a little bit easier. Most of the fuel should already be out of it cause I did drain it outside. I'm gonna start by taking these apart. I really should have put this in a parts cleaner. That's okay. Just real quickly, I'll start by taking the halves apart which is pretty straightforward just four bolts and it comes apart. Let's lay these out so I know which hole they came out of. I don't think one of them is longer than the others, but it might be, so I'll lay them out so I know where they came from. I do have new gaskets and uh, new tab washers for all of this, as well as a new accelerator pump. Let's see what it looks like inside of here. Ugh. Yeah, that's mostly water. Kind of figured it was going to be. I'll set this right here. 
All right, so there you go. This is the inner workings of a carburetor, and I suspect two major problems. Let me go drain this and I'll explain. I suspect a large portion of my problem is coming from the accelerator pump. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the accelerator pump out. Now remember, everything's a hammer. Unless it's a screwdriver, then it's a chisel. Well, that looks um, fantastic, doesn't it? Yeah, see there's so much fuel trapped in here and it should be coming out, it's just not. So let me see if I can get the check valve out. There we go. Nope, it stopped. This is a stand-up situation. All right, I'm gonna turn you off for a second, I'm sorry. So I was just informed that we got a brand new one. So, great. I guess I'm gonna go ahead and put this other one back together. I'll install this one because that'll eliminate the fuel problem. But since we're here, I'll show you the anatomy of a carburetor a little better. You have your main metering jet here. You have your idle circuit over here. You have your mixture control here and you have your accelerator pump here. Your accelerator pump is going to spray out of this little nozzle in the top half of the cabretta. You get your float, your needle. This is your mixture control that goes down into this little guy right here. And then there's your venturi and your idle circuits are sort of up here on the back side of the Butterfly valve. So, I mean, the aircraft carburetors are incredibly simple. And while I don't have to rebuild this one anymore, I do still now need to, words are hard. Hang on, let me get this in. Come on there. Come on now. There we go. Okay. I do still need to get the fuel line um, and the mixture control and everything transferred from this one to this one, which is probably pretty easy, but I'm gonna go cry, drink milk, and eat lunch. I will see y'all in just a second. Back from lunch, I did it off camera. I've got the new Magneto, um, all the hardware and everything transferred over to the airbox. Here's the old one that will go in the bin for a student project, and it is now time to test the Magneto. So let me show you this. This here is our Magneto tester. This is the drive coupler. I'm not gonna put it on there uh, for the sake of this demonstration, but here's your harness. Again, I'm not even gonna screw the harness in here for the sake of demonstration, because I know it's not firing, but when I put the harness on, I have now completed the circuit through this test stand, and I've got four plug wires here. I've also got a harness for a, a six-cylinder magneto somewhere over there, and this is another one for Bendix. Doesn't matter. But this has an impulse coupling in it, so when I twist this, and the impulse coupling fires, I should be seeing one of these spark, and I'm not. They are all dead. So that tells me there is definitely an issue with this magneto not firing. So I'm gonna take it back over to the bench and I'm gonna go ahead and get the cap off of it. All right, we're gonna do this together. I already got the screws out. Keep track of where they went. One of them is a little shorter than the rest. Uh, so you need to make sure that that goes back in this hole or you're gonna have a terrible time. Um, so I'm just gonna gently take this off and that kind of, yeah, that kind of confirmed exactly what I was wondering. So this was not even close to being anything that would be considered plugged in. So I'm just going to gently turn this thing through and see if the points are opening. Yeah, they are. They're opening. They're opening. Okay. I'm going to plug the capacitor back in, or I'm going to try to plug the capacitor back in, and then I will see one more time if it's sparking on the bench. And I knew this wasn't plugged in as soon as I pulled the cap off because it was just completely and utterly loose. So anyways, I'll get this plugged back in. I'll see you over on the bench. Okay, we have it on the bench. Let's see if we get lucky. Yep, there goes one. Let's see if I can get another one. Hopefully you saw that. So like I said, I'm just turning it by hand, but I'll explain why that worked. In an aircraft magneto, 
the purpose of the capacitor is to help collapse the field in the primary coil. So as the magnet spins, that electrical charge builds up, and when the points open, it takes away the ground from the primary coil, so now that current has nowhere to, nowhere to go. So then it builds up a current in the secondary coil, or in the secondary windings, which go out to the spark plug. But in order for this to work, the field has to collapse in the primary circuit. So the capacitor is wired in parallel with the points, and when the points open, the capacitor charges up with all of that leftover potential current, energy, whatever you want to call it, and it collapses the field much faster in that primary coil so that then the secondary coil can charge and fire the spark plug. This is why the points timing is so important, and this is why the capacitor is so important. So without the capacitor wired in there, there's nowhere for the ground to go, so it just doesn't work. It just stops working altogether. But anyways, that was relatively simple, so I'm gonna get this cleaned up and I'm gonna find the firing position, get a vent window pin in it because it's missing, and get this back on the aircraft. Okay, I got the carburetor back on, I've got the magneto back in, I've got the fuel line fixed so it's not sitting on that exhaust anymore. We're gonna crank it and we're gonna see if we get a fire. And with that, it is time for me to go get a haircut, clean up my stuff, put the cowling back on, and go home. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you leave us a like, leave us a comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff. And as always, go build something and be easy.